What's the best password manager for you? In this video, I've tested all the top options to find the simplest and most powerful password managers. And stick around to the end of the video because you might actually be wasting your money on password managers. First up is LastPass. Now, LastPass has been known for its free plan, but they kind of crippled it recently, and now you have to choose between a device type. So you can have your password sync between mobile devices or between desktop, but you can't sync them between your desktop and your mobile phone on the free plan. They do have a premium plan for $36 a year, which is priced competitively with paid plans of other password managers. So how does it stack up against the competition? You have all the basics every password manager needs. You can store logins, credit cards, personal information, secure notes, anything you need to safely store in your vault. But there's a lot about LastPass that bothers me. The lack of custom fields is not something I'm a fan of. I use custom fields in my password manager to store things like bank account info and the routing number in the login for my bank. This way, if you did store a bank account number in your bank account login, you could just copy it with a custom field instead of having to open that note field and highlight just the bank account number and copy that. It's a lot easier with custom fields. I also hate that you can't use multiple URLs in a login item. Some accounts like Microsoft have a number of different domain names that they may ask you to log in with. And this is not a problem because usually in password managers, there's a way for you to set multiple URLs for a record. So that way it can autofill on three or four or however many domains there are that you'll need to use the account info on. And there is a way to do this in LastPass in the equivalent domain settings screen, but it's really quirky. I've never really understood why it's in the setting screen and why you have to deal with the whole commas and equal signs and all that instead of being able to just add multiple URLs right in each login item. Some security keys like Google's Titan security key are not supported and you can only use a Yubi key if you do want a hardware security key but at least they do support two-factor authentication and some form of hardware security key. I just wish they would support every security key. Overall, the UI feels stale and bland, and I really don't like that the desktop app is literally just a frame of the website. It's not very easy to use. Plus, LastPass has faced a lot of security incidents over the years. The news just broke on yet another security incident, and if you ask me, one security incident is one too many for for a company storing info as sensitive as passwords. For that reason, I can't recommend LastPass to anyone. The next password manager on the list also has a free plan and that's RoboForm. The RoboForm free plan works on one device or the premium plan for $24 a year allows you to sync between unlimited devices. In many ways, RoboForm reminds me of LastPass. The web UI is similar, which is to say not great. RoboForm lacks custom fields and they don't allow you to add multiple URLs in a login item. Much like LastPass, RoboForm uses the same equivalent domain setting screen where you have to put the primary domain with an equal sign and all the other domains that it's equal to. I don't really understand this way of doing it. I wish that RoboForm would just let you add multiple URLs in a login item, similar to the way that 1Password and Keeper handle this. The RoboForm browser extension is straightforward, but the Mac app UI is all over the place. It's cluttered, it's confusing, and I often have a hard time trying to find stuff. And RoboForm does not support hardware security keys. This is a big bummer for me because although they do support app-based two-factor authentication, I like to use physical security keys for my most sensitive logins, and a password manager is at the top of my list to protect, so I personally wouldn't use a password manager that won't let me use a hardware security key. There's not much about RoboForm that makes me like it, but at least their security reputation is clean, unlike LastPass. Both RoboForm and LastPass have cluttered UIs and share a lot of the same quirks. But actually, if you're looking for a password manager with one of the cleanest UIs, the next one on my list is Dashlane. Dashlane is a popular password manager that previously required you to pay for an expensive premium plan because it included access to a VPN. I've said before that if Dashlane wanted to be taken seriously as a password manager, they needed to offer a password manager only plan that was competitively priced with other options. So that way people didn't have to pay an inflated rate and get a 
VPN forced on them. Well, Dashlane listened and they finally have a plan that's $33 a year for just the password manager. So how does it stack up to the competitors? Dashlane remains one of the simplest password managers you can use. If apps like LastPass, 1Password, or Keeper intimidate you with all their settings, Dashlane is a breath of fresh air. The UI reminds me of Dropbox. It's clean, it's simple, and everything is organized. It's just a basic app that stores your usernames and passwords. But some things about Dashlane are a little too simple. For example, the login item is a bit confusing. They've got an email field and a username field, and then sometimes an alternate username field. I haven't really figured out the difference between these three fields. Normally in a password manager, you just have your username field and your password field. And if your username happens to be your email address, you just put your email in the username field. Thankfully, you can add multiple URLs and a login item, which is a huge upgrade from LastPass and RoboForm. Dashlane also does support physical security keys, but you have to use the web app to activate them. And the web app is really buggy. I had to use it to import my passwords from my other password manager. This was slow and laggy, and I also had issues adding my hardware security key, and I had to reach out to their customer support for a resolution. I thought maybe it was my browser, so I tested Dashlane in multiple browsers, and I was having it freeze and glitch no matter which browser I used. Dashlane also recently discontinued their Windows app, and I'm personally someone who likes to have a desktop app to go along with my password manager. The Mac app is still around and I'm a Mac user, but if I was a Windows user, I wouldn't be willing to use Dashlane because there's no desktop app. I appreciate Dashlane for its simplicity, but the bugs make it hard to recommend. An improvement in functionality over Dashlane is 1Password. 1Password is another popular password manager and the only one in this video that doesn't offer a free plan. 1Password caters to power users with many features to fit different scenarios. The ability to create custom fields is a feature that any password manager can implement and 1Password does it really well. Their custom fields even support autofill. So with some websites like airline websites, the login screen sometimes asks for your last name or other details beyond your username and password. And I was able to create a custom field in 1Password that would autofill with my last name so I didn't have to type that every time when I autofilled the username and password. Another game-changing feature is the ability to share a public link to a login item. In many password managers, the only way to share a password is by sharing it with another user, putting in their email, and then they have to have an account on the password manager manager and I find that you end up just copying a password and pasting it in a text thread or an email thread. But this is not secure and it's not a good idea. So 1Password allows you to generate a link which can be viewed one time or multiple times within a given time period and share that link with others so they can securely copy the link, log into whatever they need to access, and then the link expires in due time. Keeper is the only other password manager I've tested that has both custom fields and public link sharing. 1Password can also generate two-factor authentication codes and store them in your vault, and you can even autofill them when logging into a website. One feature that is unique to 1Password and brand new is the ability to track which sign-in with provider you've used for a website. Sometimes you may choose to sign in with Google or sign in with Facebook instead of creating an account with your email and password. But the problem is you often forget which provider you picked when you set up your account. I know I've been in that position many times and I get frustrated not knowing which one I used. But now 1Password can keep track of this and it will remind you when you visit a site if you used sign in with Google or sign in with Facebook to create the account and it will tell you which provider you need to click in order to access your account. Now 1Password isn't without its quirks. I've had a lot of confusion around the desktop app and the browser extension and whether I need one or both. It seems to function with one or the other, but it also seems to have benefits to having both. There's also no way to remove app-based two-factor authentication to log into 1Password if you're using a hardware security key. 
Like I said earlier, I prefer to use hardware security keys to secure my accounts, and if you choose to use one with 1Password, they force you to also have app-based 2FA setup as a login method, and since you're only as strong as your weakest link, it's kind of pointless to use a hardware security key because app-based 2FA is a little bit weaker in my opinion, and someone could always use app-based 2FA to get into your account. Also, the my.1Password.com UI is very disjointed. You have to use this interface to set up 2FA or add team members or family members or certain things that you just can't do on the desktop app and boy is the interface cluttered and confusing. I can definitely recommend 1Password but its greatest strength is also its greatest weakness. It's for power users and it shows in the UI. It's not a simple experience like Dashlane. You can't have it both ways though and if you are looking for a simple password manager maybe consider using NordPass. But don't pass on hitting that subscribe button. I know the stats, less than 5% of you watching are subscribed. Anyway, NordPass is the youngest password manager on this list, and it's by Nord Security, the parent company that brings us NordVPN. The NordPass UI is similar to Dashlane, and it's got just the basics. It autofills your passwords, stores secure notes and credit cards, and lets you share login items with other NordPass users. It's $36 a year or $15 a year if you subscribe with NordVPN. But there's not much else to Nord pass, no custom fields, no sharing public links, no storing two-factor authentication codes in your vault. It's super basic. And there's a big quirk to NordPass. It doesn't support multiple URLs for a login item in any capacity. You can't add several URLs to a specific login item. There's no equivalent domain setting screen or anything like that. The only way to have the same account autofill on multiple URLs is by manually duplicating the record and copying and pasting the password for as many URLs as you need. And then anytime you reset your password or update it, you'd have to go through to each URL for that account and update the password. But overall, NordPass is great for anyone wanting a simple password manager that's not gonna be overwhelming with too many advanced features. It reminds me a lot of Dashlane, but it's more stable, it doesn't have all the bugs and glitches of Dashlane, and I really enjoyed it for a simple password manager. For power users, Keeper is a password password manager designed with flexibility in mind. Their website has an enterprise feel to it and you can tell that they're going after the corporate audience, although they do offer a personal version. They have a lot of features that IT departments would appreciate and it's definitely the most advanced password manager that I've ever taken a look at. It supports custom fields, including importing them from other password managers. You can store multiple URLs in a single login item. You can generate two-factor authentication codes and autofill them when logging in. And you can also generate a public link to share with anyone or just share a login item with other Keeper users. There are a few downsides to Keeper though. The BreachWatch dark web monitoring feature is an additional $20 a year, and I don't think they should be charging extra for this. Dark web monitoring is typically included in the premium plan of almost every password manager, so I don't really understand why Keeper decided to make this an upsell. Also, adding a security key to Keeper requires you to have app-based two-factor authentication active, just like 1Password. I don't get why these password managers won't let you just have a hardware security key to log in. And the browser extension experience is poor. Whenever I click it, instead of displaying the login items for the URL that I'm currently on, I still have to manually search for the URL every time, and this is just not a good experience. There's no doubt that Keeper is meant for power users, and I highly recommend it for anyone who needs ultimate flexibility. But what if you need a free password manager? Every password manager up to this point Point requires the premium version to really take advantage of all the features, but Bitwarden is changing that. Bitwarden started to grow in popularity right around when LastPass crippled their free plan. It's an open source platform that packs a big punch for the $0 price tag. The UI is not the simplest or the prettiest, but Bitwarden has everything you need. 
You can sync passwords between all devices. It has support for custom fields and multiple URLs, and you can do all of this in the free plan. Bitwarden is already a great choice with the free plan, but they do have a paid version for $10 a year. This adds the ability to use a hardware security key, generate two-factor authentication codes in the vault, and add emergency access for trusted contacts. My big gripe with Bitwarden has got to be the restrictive sharing. There's no way to add a public link to share with somebody, and there's no way to just type in someone's email and send the item to their Bitwarden account. They have to be located in your organization, which could be a family plan or a team plan. They don't really define exactly what an organization is. This is not a good design. It's highly restrictive, and I wish there was a way to generate a public link to share with somebody. But if you need a free password manager, Bitwarden is the obvious choice. Honestly, I think Bitwarden could be a good option for a lot of people, and it may not be worth paying for a password manager unless you need the advanced features that other platforms offer. I think it's also worth considering the paid plan if you can get past the subpar UI and sharing options. So if you're new to password managers and want something basic and simple, I would recommend NordPass. I think it makes a lot of sense as a first password manager, and if you've been intimidated by the thought of using LastPass or 1Password, give NordPass pass a try. If you need a free password manager, the only password manager without a free plan in this video is 1Password, but my favorite free password manager is Bitwarden. For power users, it's clear that Keeper is the best choice. Keeper can do it all and has an emphasis on teams and enterprise users. And my personal favorite password manager is 1Password. It's a well-rounded option that has advanced features while still having an intuitive UI. I've been using 1Password with my team and personally for several years, and I've been a big fan. I highly recommend using a VPN if you're gonna use a password manager because it's another way to improve your security on public Wi-Fi. I have an entire video I made looking at the top VPNs that you can check out here.